What's up, everyone? Uh, welcome to my SmackDown review as we are a few days away from Clash of Champions. Uh, pay per view this Sunday. There wasn't a lot going on, to be honest with you, looking at this whole show. And pretty much looking at it, it was very kind of uneventful in a way leading into Sunday. It wasn't a lot going on. I felt like it was bored. I don't know why I felt like I was bored throughout half the show, to be honest. And uh, I, I guess they did what they did to pretty much try to make this show interesting for Sunday. But I just felt a lot of this was just thrown together at the last minute. And you know, they say it's a WWE week. So looking at this whole thing, um, we pretty much kicked it off with. Well, we had uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn wearing Yes shirts, but they had Yep pretty much have a P covering the Daniel Bryan Yes shirt, the Yep Yep movement. And they pretty much went around asking, pretty much giving people uh, pictures telling them to join the night that they had, you know, we're going to occupy SmackDown against Shane McMahon. Pretty much what Daniel Bryan did a few years ago with Occupy and Raw. And as they did that, AJ Styles came out then. Uh, talking about he's a fighting champion. He would be defending his title Sunday. And says Jinder Mahal will do anything to get this belt back. He's called the great Kali from India and relying on the Singh brothers, Punjabi prison matches. But AJ says, you know, you know, I'm going to keep my title. And as before, he went on to talk because this is the house that AJ Styles built. Um, the Singh brothers came out then and they pretty much talked about how gender beat up both of them about a week or two ago. And AJ says, you know, I feel bad for you. How about we, you know, um, hug it up with uh, old Uncle Al, huh? But, but I don't know why he said that. I mean, I maybe to say Uncle AJ. But the same brothers kind of hugged each other. But then they said, hey, each other, you hugged me. They they hugged AJ. Just a little hug. And then they pretty much, um, you know, the same brothers talked about gender. We're tired of him. We did this. We did that for him. And he hurt us. And we want to be in your corner at, uh, Clash of Champions. AJ pretty much, oh, really? What'll be in my corner, huh? And they talked about Jinder's food and his feet smell like garlic chicken and stuff. And AJ just says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah, you know, go out, stop playing dub now. Um, what about you guys with him in India, huh? We just saw you this past weekend. Social media says a lot. And, you know, as they say, you know, shake, they shook his hand and everything, but, um, you guys tried to convince me that, but you, you can't convince me that you don't work for him anymore. Alright. And you know what? It is going to be a singles match this Sunday since um, Jinder came out then. AJ pretty much punched both of them and threw them out the ring. And AJ Styles told Jinder to get in, but he didn't. Even though I felt like this segment was just kind of whatever. And come on, was AJ Styles really going to believe the same brothers believed and they're going to be on his side this Sunday? He just played dumb for the time being. And the crowd looked like they kind of sat on their hands throughout this until, um, you know, AJ took him out. But um, I don't know. This whole gender thing, I, like, I, I will be surprised if Jinder Mahal wins the belt back this Sunday. But I hope to God that does not happen. This whole experiment thing is always, then again, why should we really, um, you know, anybody even take Jinder seriously. Didn't he just lose the Triple H in his own home country? Didn't he just lose in India? So, didn't Triple H somewhat kind of bury this guy as it is now? I know someone's going to say it was a house show and it doesn't count, but, um, still, um, Triple H beat him, so, and this is kind of before this whole match this Sunday. So, I, I don't know, and hopefully AJ moves on from this, because I don't know, I don't think WWE is not believing Jinder as much anymore. Like I said, I'll be surprised if he does win the title this Sunday, or we're still going with this thing, I don't know, but I think people just want AJ to face somebody else coming into the Royal Rumble. Uh, next was Charlotte versus Ruby Riot, which they were already in the ring, and the Riot squad was out there. Natalia was out there on commentary. Match was just kind of whatever. Next thing you know, well, did she beat him? Um, yeah, there was a disqualification. Natalia got involved, and then all the riot squad started beating up Charlotte. And then Naomi pretty much came out for the save. Then, and she pretty hit to save Carmella, Lana, and um, 
Tamina came out and helped and chased the Riot Squad away. Which is just kind of whatever with the women at this point. It, it, it was okay for whatever, but... You know... Some people wonder, what is the Riot Squad's motivation? Why are they doing this? And people wonder why Becky is not even back yet. Because I believe it's kind of weird that Becky was barely even on TV in the beginning with. But then when she is on TV, she gets beaten up. Then took him right out. Because to what I hear, she's supposed to be filming some movie. Is, is it the Nutter Marine? I think that's why Miz is in. I've already said this. For some reason, they want to make another Marine movie, which... I don't know who's watching those movies, and I guess she's in it too. So, yeah, I thought Becky would have made the save after Naomi did and show up from behind. But this is some, this is a lumberjack match this Sunday, and hopefully Charlotte gets a different opponent than Natalya this Sunday because this has kind of gone long enough. Listen, I can't tell which one was worse between the Raw and the SmackDown women's division, but I think the Raw one with the whole absolution thing was bad. And you can look at Raw last night just to look at it to be sure. Because uh, they later on that focus on the title and Paige's squad looks like afterthoughts now after the pretty much the whole roster beat up the crap out of them, so they're they're really bad. Uh, moving on from that, Daniel Bryan pretty much told Shane on the phone he'll be on commentary for the main event tonight, and you know we're gonna keep everything under control. And Owens and Zayn told Bryan pretty much giving a pamphlet for the Yep movement tonight. Uh, Bobby Roode, not Bobby Roode, uh, Dolph Ziggler went into Baron Corbin. I uh, surprised they let Corbin actually wrestle out without a shirt this time. Just kind of saw that for a second because they usually make him wear a shirt, but it looks like they didn't. It ended in DQ. It's nothing much to say here from this. Roode is glorious DDT on both of them and said glorious. Even though it looks like he's almost about to say beer money half the time. Um... It's whatever. It hasn't really been any type of build. I still think it's weird. Ziggler just got added to this match at the last second because, oh, he's, he's that damn good. Which he is, but I just really have grown tired of Ziggler and WWE, being. I'm just kind of waiting for him to go somewhere else now. I don't know. Ring of Honor. New Japan. Impact. Something else. He needs to change the scenery. So I just don't I don't I don't really care for this triple threat match this Sunday. I really don't even care who wins, but maybe I'm not saying the match maybe hopefully it doesn't suck Sunday, but I really don't care what's going on in this feud. Like I said, it's already confusing on why Ziggler's even involved as for a triple threat. Uh the Bludgeon Brothers destroyed some jobbers, which one of them screamed hi like a girl, which I keep reading now. They said if it is true um, they said that was Colin Delaney. You remember Colin Delaney he used to be on ECW? The TV, well, the WWE version. Real skinny kid that kept getting beat up every week. By As a jobber, so we'll see how that goes. So it was funny that the guy screamed like, like a girl, but um, pretty much Luke Harper, um, Eric Rowan destroyed these guys. At least they just make them strong, you know, make them look strong and everything. And they did their, um, that powerbomb thing was funny, though, with the girl screaming over there from that guy. But some people did say it was Colin Delaney in that. I, that may not be sure, but I, I have read something on that tonight. And I guess a special edition of the Fashion File, which you can only look at WWE.com for the full version. For some reason, they're going to face this Sunday, so I don't really care for this match. And you know the outcome for it, so, um, we all know who will win. It was time for the... Occupy Smackdown thing with the Yup shirts. Owens and Zayn came out. Even though people chanting yes. So they chanting Yup a little out there too. Owens talked about being handcuffed to the ring and complain what's happened. Shane McMahon is the worst of the whole family. That Vince, he's a tyrant. That Vince can be the hard, you know, worst promoter or whatever. And Stephanie is vindictive, I believe. But Shane, he, he's the worst McMahon, he says. And, you know, Shane just has a vendetta against them and you know you wanted all everybody on smackdown to come up and occupy smackdown but daniel bryan came up and he did his yes chance and he says listen the yes movement and this yep thing are not the same i wasn't in it for me we were fighting the power but um on zane on zane said we're doing this for ourselves and he said the brian pretty much wanted to say you know the yes movement was about the fans and you know what 
um, pretty much, um, he pretty much was tired of what they were doing, but uh, Zane pretty much told Brian that Shane is a maniac and you need to do something about this. You know, we've been on the independence for years trying to get the down. And pretty much Shane says, you know, we rec uh, not Shane, but uh, Brian says, I recognize your talents. And you know what? It's going to be two referees at Clash of Champions. Shane and him. So now we have two referees for this tag match this Sunday. So it almost, it is make people now wonder what is Daniel Bryan going to do this Sunday now. Is he face? Is he heel? He, he's, it's really complex right now to where this is going. So some people wonder what Daniel Bryan will do this Sunday. How will he get involved? Who will he screw over? Is he face? Who will turn heel? I don't know. So, you know, he's, it's like Daniel Bryan's kind of playing both sides. He's trying to be his general manager role, but it's like he is loyal to Shane, but he's not going to let Shane's personal feelings get in the way of this. So at least that's the interesting part of that. The New Day were out there with their pancakes. And it was time, it's Rusev Day, as he actually finished the song this time of Rusev Day for Aiden English. And, um, Aiden English and uh, Rusev. For the 12 days of Christmas, but the Usos came out then. Y'all talking about it ain't gonna be no new day, it ain't gonna be no Rusev day. It's gonna be the Usos. Next thing you know, Gable and Benjamin came out, and then they tried to do the whole new day Uso, Uso day. It's gonna be training day, even though he stole the line. Uh, Benjamin said, That's that's um, that's uh, you know, King Kong ain't got it, show me so. At pretty much when the match began between the Usos and um, English and Rusev, English and Rusev got the win with the Machi kick. Rusev hit his DDT. I don't know why I said Rusev, but uh, Aiden English hit his D front DDT or the Director's Cup for the win. Um, the, ma the match itself was just kind of whatever. Listen, I don't know why we have a Fatal 4-Way tag team in the begin with, but... I guess we're just going with that just because with this fatal four-way tag team just adding teams in there just because we're just adding anybody in this thing so I just see the Usos retaining to be honest can this be a good match yes it could be very chaotic and all over the place or clusterfuck but it, come on Benjamin and Gable did were the number one contenders but for some reason we just put New Day and Rusev Day in the match and then after they interviewed AJ Styles Talked about Sunday and then Jinder Mahal did a very weak attack from behind. Just really nothing. That was a very weak day. He, he knocked them and then he punched them while he was on the ground. And that was it. This, man, this show just, I don't know, man. This show is just kind of low tonight. And he just punched them. It was very, that was a weak beat now. Weak attack. So it's like, all he did was punch them two times. He punched them to the ground. He punched them one more time and that was it. And he said he would take his title back this Sunday and blah, blah, blah. That's that's it for gender. Uh, Shinsuke and Orton came out as they interviewed him. As Orton said, you know, I can only speak of my own motivations and that uh, Shane McMahon. But he's going to do everybody a favor since he says I don't like Owens and Zayn. So um, we're going to make sure they lose their, their job Sunday. As Nakamura said, yep. So it's almost like, um, so are they on Shane's side in a way? Uh, I guess they are, but they said, hey, we're in it for ourselves, though. They cost the Survivor Series, so we're going to lose, make them lose their job. They got nothing at stake, but, uh, but, I um, mean, we, we got to them. I, I just feel like Orton and Nakamura are just random in this whole story. Uh, Owens and then when he gets Nakamura, it was an okay match. The big thing was when the ref went down, ref bump, um, uh, Daniel Bryan went to the referee, putting on the referee shirt. Shinsuke looked like he could have got the win, but uh, he didn't, and it was a two count. And it's pretty much everything went crazy. Zayn got involved, then Orton did, but Zayn did a thumb to the eye on Orton and threw him into the post. Nakamura tried to get him after that, but Owens hit the pop-up power bomb for the win, and pretty much um, beat beat uh, Owens beat Nakamura. And then after the match, Renee Young asked him, you know, um, what are you going to do with this last night here? And Owen Simmons says, you know, nobody, not Shane, not Nakamura, not Randy Orton will take this away from us. 
we are the best not only on SmackDown and all the WWE. And it's kind of funny when Zayn is just kind of, you know, when, when Owens is saying yup a whole bunch of times, Zayn is just doing there, doing his shirt, like, lifting up and down the yup shirt, yup, 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 yup. So, uh, yeah. Uh, th this show itself, it was really nothing really that interesting going on. Mo well, maybe just for the Brian thing to see what's going to happen since we have two referees or what Shane and Brian's going to do or what type of dissension will happen with these guys. Even though Nakamura and Orange just feel kind of there in a way throughout this whole thing and they're just there to beat them on and Zayn up. We'll see what happens this Sunday. So hopefully the match doesn't suck. But it wasn't much to say about SmackDown coming into this pay-per-view this Sunday. A, um, no one cares about gender. So it, it, it's just it's just whatever with that guy. Alright? It, it really is. AJ Styles wins. Boom. If not, then I'll be very, some would be surprised if Jenner gets the belt back. Uh, everything else going on here. Look at it that way, but um, I, I, it's too. That out. I believe it will be a good show. So um, we'll see what happens from there. check the camera there for a second but uh, yeah we'll see what happens um, got going in for uh, Sunday but uh, the rest of the show it's kind of whatever 